Hi everyone, and welcome back to Balkansis, the show that's going to help you navigate the massive challenges of life, motherhood, culture, identity, and belonging with more ease, acceptance, joy, and purpose. Thanks to each and every one of you that come back every time to listen, learn, heal, and feel inspired. If you do love the podcast, then do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button. It really does help spread the word. Yay! Woohoo! Welcome, everybody, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of Balkan Sis. I say this every single time, and people must be sick of hearing it. I'm so excited about today's guest because, honestly, how cool is this? So, we've got Cody McLean Brown here, which I do think Cody should change his last name to a more Croatian last name. <laughs> it's modern now for the husbands to take on some of the wife's name. Um, but he is the author of Chasing a Croatian Girl, which was a book that was gifted uh, to me by a family member that I chewed up in one night. And I just thought, I've got to get this guy on. He gets it. He gets the people. He gets the cultural nuances. And there was just so much to dissect from the book that I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into. So welcome, Cody. And um, before we begin, just, yeah, give us a little bit of a spiel. What family do you come from? What state? <laughs> <laughs> and all well, the I things. Will, I will say that uh, I've thought about changing my name, but my first name. So I was thinking about Cody Slav or <laughs> Cody Mir. So, I do like Cody Slav. I, I and we could be the fans, like like Cody Slavs, like the mini one, like the minions. You know how usually if you're a comedian or, you know, a singer or something, you have little minions, like little fans. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like the con heads on, uh, on Succession. I don't know if you watched that. So um, anyways, uh, I've lived in Croatia for 12 years uh, because uh, my wife, I chased her here. Now it sounds really creepy, but uh, I mean, you know, um, I didn't chase her here. She just, anyways. She uh, to yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been together for, uh, oh my God, like. 18 years which sounds unbelievable but anyways um and i uh i teach at the faculty of political science um and uh i have a phd Ooh, uh, so fancy. i know fancy <laughs> yeah um but uh you know and i used to be exceptional but now there's a bunch of foreigners and people who've come back to croatia so i'm not that special um but anyways i'm from oklahoma originally um the only thing you need to know about Oklahoma is uh, the state's motto is Oklahoma is okay and that's kind of pushing it uh, <laughs> so you know Sounds, I really like Croatia you're like and, a really uh, good ambassador it makes me really want to go there that's uh, yeah yeah no you don't need to you don't need to go there um you know it's it, it'd be like it'd be like somebody you know I mean it's different you know Croatians are so attached to where they're from right and um in America we just don't have that because we're so nomadic you know we just move around so much and um you know it's just uh but why let's honestly let's just dive straight into it because all that jazz of like who am i and where am i from you know it is so croatian it, it is so just why do you think that is like why do you think we are so entrenched in where we are from because i told andrew the other day i had a cry and i live on the gold coast sunniest place on earth it's fucking fabulous it's awesome so blessed to be here every day and i said to Andrew in the car we're driving our kids in the back he's asleep we're drinking a coffee life's good and i start crying and he's like what the fuck just what what i don't get it it's like a fine ass sunday the sun's shining your kid's sleeping i'm driving you literally just gotta be and i'm like i miss home he's like i don't get it <laughs> you know so it's like, yeah, why do you think that is, that that such a big attachment to home, something that us, I guess, Europeans more, more so have than Americans and Australians? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, I mean, partly, I think with the Australians and the Americans, you know, it's because no one, other than like First Nations and stuff, no one's really from there. And mm -hmm. so there's already this huge separation from from the history, right? And then, you know, once you get there, like my family uh, came in 18, part of my family came in 1861, you know, and they just kept moving, you know, and so we just, you know, and so it's hard to build this up. Whereas in Croatia, I love this story. I had a friend, um, we were at some event and she said, hey, I want you to meet somebody. And I was like, okay. 
And she said, our families have been neighbors. Of course, this is in, they're, they're from Imotsky, right? Um, but she said, our families have been neighbors for 400 years, you know? And mm -hmm. so you have these roots, you have this this place. And, and you know, but it's also ironic because Croatians are so attached to, to where they're from, but they also complain about it all the time. Well, yeah. I guess when you've been somewhere for 400 years, and yeah, you're tight, okay. like you would be, you know what I mean? It's, it's like the bubbles. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like our people are onto something because especially the older generation, they're like, ah, oh, see, now, I have one leg in the grave and one leg out. And they say that for like 30 years. But they bloody live until they're like so old. And then you got nannies over here who are like feed and get up in the morning and drink their little juice, you know. It's like they don't have supplements. They don't, there's none of that shit. It's just like living, get on with it, son. Like, come on, you know, like, come on, pull up the bootstraps. Like the mentality is just so different. And sometimes I don't even know where my head's at. Yeah, um, yeah. So well, I, I, two worlds, you know, and that's where you've been yo-yoing from, like between these two worlds for like such a long time. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, um, you know, like with the older people, like, I mean, uh, when I say the older people, I basically mean my mother-in-law, right? Because this is how it's all. I love through, her. I, I, through, I, I through, through love her. Stuff. I'm like, I want put it so on the podcast. She'd be sick as I'm like. Oh, yeah, she, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. It's she, like you get all the glory and fame based off her stories. It feels yeah, so she, she brings up all the time, right? She's like, she's like, <laughs> you owe me money. Like, you know. <laughs> Like it's because she of me. You, you know. She fed you and bathed you since you yeah, were like yeah. thirty something. Um, but uh, you know, with her, like everything that she worries about is like stuff that to me is like just weird. And then all the stuff that like I'm programmed to worry about, like you know, it, it, she's just like, Mah, like, Pfft, like you know, like it, and it, it, you know, and so it's just this this difference, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, she worries about the state of the floor, or that my shirts aren't ironed. And uh, you know. unironed shirt right over here, man. Unironed straight out of the basket. She, she went on. She goes on this big rant. She's like, this was especially this summer, right? And um, she's like, you know, she's like, yeah, you know, you're smart, but I have experience. And I'm like, well, <laughs> well hold on, hold on. Let, let's 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 talk about these experiences you have, right? Because you know, I've lived in more countries. I've had more jobs than hey, you. Hey, you didn't go through a war, so not nah, you didn't experience yeah. shit. <laughs> well, and then she's like, she's like, yeah, but I was in like, I was born in the Second World War, and I was in communism, and then we had the Homeland War, and and I'm like, and then she's like, and that's why you have to iron your shirts. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, how is any that linked yes, to like one? Everything to... <laughs> is a metaphor. Everything is a metaphor. Literally, like something always has to mean something else. It's not really about the shirt or the floor or yeah. this or that. And and I think to us, the children of these people we get that it's like we live that and it's just normal and then you realize it's not normal when your aussie friends come over and there's like you know i mean not a pig on the spit like on a normal tuesday but like your mum's made like pita sarma whatever it's like fucking hot as and we're eating sarma with like this fan spitting water at us you know and it was just so many analogies that you put in the book that i just i it just transformed me back to so much of like of my own experiences and one of them was when you said in the book, um, I just want to go with my Amer American daughter, like back to America, sit in front of a fan, like with bare feet. And we just want to sit there with all the windows open. I just want to live my life like that. And that just hit me because I'm like, oh my God, sometimes I'm really like, yeah, fuck the culture, fuck the people, fuck the community, fuck all of it. Don't want to be part of it, right? No interest. And then other times, like in the car, I'm crying and I'm like, I miss my family. Like, I miss my home. I miss my childhood memories and experiences. Like, you know, just being free, that that feeling of being free. And, like, it's just a different sense of being. What do you think those nuances are? Because it's often a magic that you can't really describe. But because you've lived it now for so long, that duplicity of the two, what what is it that you've been unearthing, like, in the, in the last 20 years? Well, I'll tell you. I think, um, you know, for, for me – it's all about the the community right and and so you have like and you're not aware of it right but there's like this net of familiarity of of 
eventually becomes kind of like responsibility to each other mm -hmm. and also norms and customs and you know and, and like it just kind of affects you um i in my brain i completely reject the logic of propu okay but in my heart right i i now act like it's a thing Right. Yeah, no, nothing, you've, you've nothing. turned into like an old Croatian lady, from what yeah, I yeah, I don't I believe in the heard. science of it, right? That that's nonsense. But uh, but you know, so like when I wash my hair, I walk around with a towel on my head because <laughs> it's the um, spirit of Promaya. You know, we said yeah, in Bosnia, like right? Promaya in Croatia, it's Propu. But you know, you try and describe it here, and it's like the draft, and people are just like, first of all, draft is not a good terminology for it because it's right. very oh, hard it's... to describe the science. So yeah. that's why I like the way you put it in the book because you have like little graphics. You literally have this diagram. Of, oh, I, I died. I when I saw so, so, it, I think. I, I out. But I think that um, you know, there's just this stronger connection between people, and that is what like that's what affects you, and mm -hmm. it's it's like it seeps in. It's I don't know, maybe it's some kind of Jungian collective thing, but but I feel like in the United States, especially, we're just so isolated from each other right that it's just you know that i don't care i can be free and i don't feel like i'm upsetting anyone right whereas here i feel like some for some reason i have some obligation to the old lady across the hallway to mm -hmm. not sit in front of the window i don't know why <laughs> yes see you've reversed it like you've reversed the mentality whereas for yeah. me it's gone the other way right so in a way i'm like you but in the aussie in aussie forum and and i feel like that here like i have a little french granny which i call meme and she's just the best like love her love just love her so much and i just randomly cook for her and i just drop food off like uber and like we'll be driving and it was like oh mommy we go see meme again and i'm like yes honey and i love her like old floors and her pictures and she kisses me i give her all the food and i just feel such when there's leftovers they cannot sit there they cannot it's like my soul is crying even i give it to meme and then uh, andrew is like now become the uber because i'm like babe go drop it to meme he's like what the fuck can't we just push it in the freezer why are yeah. we giving everything to meme i'm like don't touch the biscuits they're for meme and he's like but you bought them for us. I'm like slapping his hand, you know? But that's, I don't know. It's just my dad was always like, Cherry, ako možeš pomoč nekome. You know, if you can help somebody, if you can do something good, always do it. So it's just yeah. this thing that's been ingrained, ingrained in for me to think outside myself. But that has come with the cost and a price, especially when you apply that thing in the Western society. You know, yeah, when then, you're in the Western then, society, then people capitalize weird. on that, like in jobs. Oh, look at that idiot. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, oh, look at me, such a hard worker. They're like, super. Now you can do overtime and we won't pay you anything extra. I'm like, that's cool. And that's the thing. So I feel like places here do capitalize on that goodness. So where do you find that balance, even for yourself living in Croatia, between the me and the us? Ooh. You know, it's kind of just, uh, it's like, it's just instinct, right? Like, cause this mm -hmm. is like, you know, it's so confusing cause I've, I've definitely changed, you know, I'm definitely more accepting of what I used to think was my wife's weird insistence on stuff, but then there's still like this American core of me. that's like, you know, like, like when it's my daughter and I, right. If we're just mm -hmm. alone and she's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, yeah, there's food in the fridge, you know? <laughs> oh, is that a dad yeah. thing or an American thing? I think it's an American thing, right? Because like, my husband's you know. like, oh, yeah, Vina, just go fetch yourself some cereal. I'm yeah, like, I'm get like, up yeah, and give it to yeah, Okay. She's like, is there food? I'm like, oh, you got eyes and arms. Like, just, you know, mm. whereas, like, my wife even uh, commented on this the other day. She's like, you know, I'm still, like, doing all this stuff for her, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's because that's what your mom still does for you, and you're not a child. Um, you know, and so <laughs> I think that it's just like, there's just, so there's, like, this internal core of me that's that's not going to change. And that's why it's important to try to understand and at least accept what's going on so you're not like miserable all the time fighting against it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can't, you're like sort of not really, you know, when I came to Australia, I learned this term about the ocean here, like about the water because we live near the beach. And I remember I knew nothing about 
the beach or the water. Like I grew up inland of like the Balkans. So like nowhere near the water. So, you know, when I identify myself as a Croatian, like I say to people, yeah, Croatian, because you don't want to fucking untangle the history in front of them. They don't even know. They're like, oh, Dubrovnik. Yeah. You're like, nah, buddy, so far away from there, but not that far. And then they're like, you can see their little brains ticking. They just don't get it. And I remember we come to Australia, we're like, wow, yes, super. Oh, my God, we're at the beach. And we're, like, just feasting our eyes on this, like, different kind of beauty. Mind you, we're sweating, like sweating our teeth off. I'm in the ocean. I'm swimming, you know. And then there's a thing called the current. I'm like, what's even a current? Did I know? Do you think my auntie thought or anybody who lived here so long thought I should tell this child about currents and shit? No, off I go. I'm swimming because I'm cocky. You know, I'm young. Next thing you know, I get caught in this like current. And then later on, I learned. So once I got spat out violently and almost like died, that you swim against the, like you swim on the side of the current. You don't swim against it. You go sideways. So I almost yeah. feel like that's what you've done. Yeah. <laughs> you've gone sort of like under the radar, like sideways. Like I'm going to go make a book about this. I'm going to go do stand up comedy about this. I'm going to laugh at myself, and make fun of others. And I'm going to educate and talk and connect. So you've sort of segued into this different way of being, which I think is really cool. Like, how did the book idea come about? Like, where did that, did you always sort of have this sense of humor or like, was it just this natural progression? How did that sort of flow? Um, yeah, I mean, I've always been, I've always had a sense of humor. I mean, I, I'm like a short, left-handed, opinionated person. And you either going to have a sense of humor or you're going to be miserable and get beat up a bunch, you know. Um, I still got beat up a bunch, but I just laughed about it, um, you know, so I've always had a sense of humor. But the way the blog started is or, or the way the book came out is a couple of reasons. One, um, I wanted to be a writer since like high school, right? Last years of high school, I went to college, I studied English literature and I had a friend there and he and I wrote together. And um, in my opinion, he wasn't that good. Um, but then he published a book and it became a New York Times bestseller. Mm -hmm. And um, I read it and it was really good. Right. And I was like, dang. And I, I basically it said, I said, how did you get, you know, from great? shit to good? Yeah. Right. And he said, he, and he had started this, um, this like email list called Short Story Thursday, where he had to, he would go find a public domain short story and send it to everybody. But he would write an introduction to it to make it funny and stuff, right? And he said having this audience and knowing that he had to like write something funny and good really helped. And so because of that, I thought, well, okay, I'm gonna start a blog. And originally it was like about like Croatian tax policy, which, and then my friend was like, your blog sucks. Why don't you write about like all the stuff you talk about, like your crazy neighbors and things like that. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that's a good idea. And so then I started doing that and then it got it like, and this was back when people still read blogs, mm. right? Like it was, at the, it was at the right time. It was before Facebook was noise, mm. right? And so you could actually share something on Facebook and people were like, oh, and they'd click and read it. Um, and so that really kind of went viral. And so then I had the idea of the book, um, and then, you know, just kind of came through and, you know, the book is based, it's like half the book is revised blog posts, but they're stuck into a narrative. Yeah. And then the other half of it is all new stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that's how it came about. And then the way I got the book deal was I posted something like this is back when I was still, I couldn't sleep and split unless I was drunk because it was hot and noisy. Now I'm actually okay. I'm okay. And the windows were closed, so you were suffocating. Yeah, right. was, you know, just you know. And so I, uh, I, I, I got drunk one night, uh, every night. But this night I got drunk, and I, I made a post on Facebook, and it had a huge grammatical like error in it, right? And uh, then I went to sleep. <laughs> and then I woke up, and there were all these comments, you know. And then people were pointing out the error, and I was like, oh crap. And so then I changed it. And then somebody messaged me and said like. You know, why'd you mess with the post? I said, oh, well, I had a big grammatical error. And she said, oh, well, what was it? And I said, oh, this. And she said, oh, well, I work for a publisher. That's that's no big deal. And I was like, oh, well, how about a how about a book deal, right? And she was like, well, okay. Like, do you have a proposal? And I'd already written a proposal, so I like sent it to her, and um, and then it came out about that way that they published it. So. Oh, that's awesome. That's so yeah. cool. Like, but so, that so it sort of happened, you know, in a like your life's probably taken you in a direction that you couldn't have like your younger self wouldn't have thought shit that's going to be me 
living yeah, I mean, with Sported Sar, drunk is, every night. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, when I was in college, I like dreamed of being an expat writer. Like in high school, my favorite author was Henry Miller, uh, not because of the sex stuff, but just because of the the honesty and the the being living in Paris and stuff. And I was like, oh, I'd like to be an expat writer. So that kind of happened. Um, and then also, the funny thing is, is when I signed the day I signed the book contract, the de- next day I flew to the U.S. And now on that trip, I went and hung out with my um, best-selling author friend who's now the drummer in a very popular band um not so. name dropping or anything that's such yeah, a croatian yeah. thing you're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. like oh just big noting my famous friends <laughs> but anyways uh you know but it was fun that like you know he had had his successful book i knew i knew my book was going to be quite popular uh for by croatian standards at least um and so yeah and it's changed my life i mean i wrote a second book it was turned into a play. Now I'm working on uh, making it a sitcom um, for Croatian television. So, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm every every now and then I'm thinking like, man, it's really good. I started that blog. That's awesome. <laughs> and and honestly, and, like, and it's it, like you traded Paris for Croatia, but man, I reckon that's a good trade off. Yeah, yeah, the bed bugs. Yeah, sure. Um, and also it's, um, you know, it, 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 but writing the book. Right. Doing that, that helped me understand all these things that originally annoyed the crap out of me, mm. you know, like mm. how happy they, you know, the gift giving, all this stuff. Oh, the gift giving. Oh, my God. Like I when that guy from All Things Creation podcast, when he didn't know about the, the bomboniere, you know, the baidera, I was like, dude, how did you know about the book? Because I have a stash right now that I can prove in my big Ikea cupboard wardrobe that annoys my husband. We almost got divorced building that. And there's oh, like a oh. whole basket full of like shit I'm going to re-gift. Like that's just chilling there. Like candles, yeah. bomboniera, kiki bombo, like just random shit that yeah. I was gifted. It's that I, it's, it's just covered. a thing. And Andrew's, my husband's always like, why do we have to give everything to somebody else? Like when <laughs> not like, because I just, he really just like points it out in black and white. And my answer is just, babe. I'm just like generally pay <laughs> and he's just like I don't fucking get it he's like and even my baba she used to come with like you know bags like like from Ali or like Woolworths here like a big chain you know Costco only just came up near our neighborhood I'm bloody excited about that and it's like she'd come with these little bags shuffling you know and you open it up it's like two mandarins and an orange like just chilling in a bag and I'm like baba what's this but I tell you what it was the best one she picked I had this knack for picking even my dad goes and gets a watermelon and he like knocks it you know what I mean and he's knocking it he's listening to it he's like analyzing this watermelon man I'm just like yeah that looks like a cool watermelon take it home tastes like shit so I'm just like it's just this thing that you can't describe. Like it's those little nuances that just make sense to me and don't make sense to someone else. Like my husband's got Italian heritage and his parents came out here like 40 years ago, but he grew up here. Yeah. This like beautiful place, paradise was his neighborhood. You know, and often I'm just like so pissed off that he had such a nice normal upbringing. I'm like, you just don't fucking get it. Like, well, this is this is how I feel about about being here, right? Like, my wife, like, you know, okay, aside from the war, and you know, some oh, just that little, like, just that, yeah, just like, you know, but like, like, you know, like, just growing, like, she grew up in Split, you know, like she had Latin class next to a Roman palace. I had Latin in oklahoma like i walked out and there's a walmart i'm not related to latin at all right you know (laughs) yeah so you felt like her life was like really exciting and yours was just like so mediocre but i like i crave mediocrity it's really strange i like and i remember when i started you know i was going to like this acupuncturist after i had my son and all these hormones and going nuts and you know you'd know when you had a child and and she gets chatting to me about things and, you know, not everything's so black and white. And, you know, she's sort of trying to help me rearrange my thinking, you know, and plus new mum, so I'm hypervigilant as fuck. And anyway, so she gives me a few meditation exercises. We do the acupuncture, you know, to get me to, like, calm my nervous system a bit more. I come back to her. She's like, so how's things been? And I'm like, oh, um, yeah, all, all right, I guess. And she's like, oh, what's what's been happening? I'm like, well, like, not much. She's like, oh, okay. And I'm just sitting there. And I was like, is this how normal people feel? Like, just bland? And she's like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's just, like, because I'm so used to us being so full of expression and fire and everything's either the floor or you, you die. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like everything's yeah. so dramatic, you know, everything means something. And then all of a sudden I'm living in this new place with these new people with this new mentality 
And I'm like, man, where do I fit in in the ladder? Like, where where am I at, right? And then I go back overseas and they're like, Nisi in Asha. And I'm like, I am. I'm from this place. I am from here. No, no, no. This is positive now. I'm too positive. <laughs> and yeah. when I'm doing small talk with the shopkeeper, they think I'm fucking crazy. They're like, why are you talking to her? I'm like, Pafina Baba, you know, she's cute. She's nice. I asked her, like, how's your day? Whatever. She's like, yeah. They're like, why are you so friendly? They were like pulled off by my friendliness. Yeah, well, this is, like, I mean, such this an is, Aussie I, thing. I make the joke uh, why Croatians don't use turn signals. And it's, you know, it's because why is it your business to know where I'm going, right? And I kind of feel like this is like, you know, like, unless it's a neighbor. And this is this is the whole thing, too. It's all about um, if you know something. And, and, and Croatians, are, you're, you're not aware that you do this, right? But when we were looking for an apartment, my mother-in-law would come with us sometimes because, sure. Um, and she, she has and to the, approve of the whole thing. Yeah, That's she why. and the owner would, like, list every possible person they may know and mm-hmm. then they'd usually find somebody right and so the thing is though is that you basically you're just a stranger and you don't matter until there's something that connects us mm-hmm. in some vague way right but it can be a common acquaintance it can be from being from the same location right and so yeah so talking to the shopkeeper unless you see that shopkeeper all the time Right now yeah. she's part of the the circle, right? Then yeah, you're a big weirdo. Oh, and it's like when I went back to the you know whatever it was, can't remember the shop, consul or whatever. Like the service was so shit, and oh, yeah. I was like, she's like chewing her gum, and she like could not be bothered. And I'm like, dude, like you're getting paid. Like I know it's not a big pay, but like you know, put a smile on your dial, man. Like over here when we came to Australia, my mum, we went to like our local you know, big sort of grocery chain, she's doing this big shop, like, four kids plus her dad, like, you know what I mean, making sarma for the next 10 years, like, you know, we need a lot of shit. You know, she's, like, doing this, she's like, oh, hey, guys, how you going? And how's your morning? Like, mama's like, what is she saying? Because my mum, because, you know, I'm, like, a translator at age 11, as you do. And so I'm, like, standing between my mum and this, like, shopkeeper, you know, and mum's like, like, what is she asking me? What's happened? And I was like, oh, no, mum, she asked, how's your day? She's like, oh, what, why does she care? Like, yeah. why does she care how my day is? And I'm like, oh, pa mama, like, she's trying to be friendly. And then I'm, like, so awkward because the girl's like, oh, is there a problem? Like, oh, did I do, you know? And I'm like, no, 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 you're good. You're all good. And I was like, I dress you on a pojut. Like, you know, get her to hurry up. Like, I'm in a hurry, you know? Got four kids to feed. And I'm just, like, in the fucking middle. Just like, ugh, I don't want to be this kid. Like, I just want the Aussie kid who eats peanut butter sandwiches. Like, I don't want to be a translator. I'm only 11, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, it's funny when you see, like, those differences playing out in front of you. But now my mom, she is full on out there, man. Like my mom is so bloody talkative. And when we went back to Bosnia and to our village and my auntie's walking with us and I took Andrew back and man, that was, that's a whole book in itself, taking Andrew back there. That was a goal of mine. And I did it. I was so proud of myself. Like it was a big achievement. And I'm, and we're standing in front of my old house where I was like born and, you know, bred and Andrew's like touching my shoulder and I'm like sweating I've got like clumped up throat I'm like I can't I'm not coping right and my mum's like what's wrong with you I just in that was now you know why are you so nervous and my mum's just like flannering around with this Oriton umbrella I bought from the Gold Coast you know and we're walking around and mum's saying hello to everybody right she's just walking around as if she just left there like a day ago you know it hasn't been 20 years and my auntie goes Jesus Christ your mum's really friendly what she never was this friendly or this talkative with people and my mum turns around to her she's like well my life taught me like my life taught me that I had to become this way right so that's the thing I think you just pick up those it's like you're in a new place you have to there's no other way so same for you I, I feel like your sense of humor in a way saved you from a lot of like shit moments because you know if you come in with that negative stance people don't want to borrow you especially being American yeah, no, that's that's true. I mean, it's um, and one thing. I mean, one thing that I'm really lucky about is that Croatians have an incredible sense of humor. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay, Bosnians apparently have the best, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> but they still, but they, but they still like, you know, they like to laugh. They like jokes. They're they're okay if you make fun of them, like you know, like if it's done in the right way, you know, like they're not they're not overly sensitive except about sports and food. Oh yeah. Um, you know, but um, 
Whereas, I don't know, I mean, I guess if I was like in a Nordic country or in one of the North, like maybe there wouldn't be such a, you know, res- humorous response to it, you know? And so so it's it's nice to be around. I mean, my mother-in-law, like even when she and I are, are at he- odds with each other, which is less, and I got to say, the better my Croatian gets, the more time we spend together, the, the mm. more we get along. Now we kind of gang up against my wife sometimes. You know? Oh, so now it's the yeah, tables yeah, yeah. have reversed. She so. shit up, but <laughs> but um, you know, even even then, like she has a very good sense of humor, you know, and we can tease each other and make jokes, and you know. Oh, and that's... you're in the circle, man, forever. That's it. So, you're in now. There is no turning back. Like my uh, parents love my husband more than me, man. Like my dad will come to my house and he painted this whole house with one little paintbrush. And I'm like, dad, we can spray the house. He's like, nah, he's got his paintbrush and he's got the bike. I'm like, dad, we can spray. We can get this shit done in like two days. And he's like, pulls the team at it. He's got his cigarette. <laughs> he's on the ladder. <laughs> he's like got his shit everywhere. And he's just, and, and I put on like Misha Kovac, you know, loves listening to him. So he's just like from every room, you can hear music yeah, him blasting. <laughs> Yeah, perfect. And he's just loving life and he's like, nah, I didn't get to finish my house, you know, for everything that happened. So I get to now do your house. So it's like a privilege to me, you know. So it was beautiful. And then my husband comes home and my dad's like, have you fed him? Like, yes, modala kavu cherry, like na pravu kavu, you know. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I've been making coffees all day, you know. My dad's just like, sinemoi tako. Like, Andrew and I will be talking about my dad's like TV, something's broken. And my dad's like, oh, don't gang up on Andrew. Don't talk like that to Andrew. Don't be so mean to him. I'm like, dad, we're not even fighting. But it's because we're talking English and my dad doesn't understand. He thinks we're occurring, but we're not. We're just trying to solve like my dad's European channels, you know? So now you're officially in the circle. My, they, I will say this Westerners, like Americans and I guess Australians, we, we are louder right mm. that like like we talk like, faster too i think so people it's just... think it's yelling like my my mother-in-law will think i'm mad but yeah I'm just adamant about something mm. right you know but I'm not angry. she's like why are you yelling and so mad i'm like i'm not like because one day i know like croatians when they get mad they actually kind of get quiet mm. right like oh upset. yeah they're like, oh yeah do a Virginia. Uh, like we, that, hold, like, you know. we hold grudges, man. When we give oh. you the look, it's like my son knows and my husband knows. Oh, don't talk to mama. Like, man, she's not we in were, a good mood. We were at some wedding, like some distant family wedding, and a closer family member wasn't invited. And I was like, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, right? Like, we were invited, you know, and, and I found out, like, that, like, you know, she <laughs> said something about the you know, the groom's uh, father's wife back when they were dating in, like, high school, like, you know, 30 years ago. And I was yeah. like, whoa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but lucky. Yeah, lucky you came with a good attitude, man, because you would have had an ex against your name, like, the minute you walked through the door. Like, and how does your punica and your wife feel about all, like, your storytelling and your endeavors and all that? Oh, like, well, how do they feel about all that now that it's out in the open? And, and I mean, they, to... that's a bit... My wife is probably the worst person to be married to someone who's like, hey, guess what? I'm going to tell everybody everything about us, right? Because she's very private. Mm. Um, and so, you know, but she is also very supportive, you know. I mean, she know, she sees how how the books and, and, you know, this persona has helped make this place my home, you know, how, mm-hmm. how much it's an integral part. Um, you know, but so we just kind of have a have a balance. And, you know, I mean, it is a responsibility. I need to be careful, like, what I write about, what I talk mm. about. Um, you know, uh, Ponitsa, on the other hand, you know, she, sometimes she'll meet with older friends, you know, and then they'll find out that she's the Ponitsa. <laughs> and, she and, loves it. All yeah, secretly, yeah. she loves it. It. <laughs> it. it was turned into a play and split. And I couldn't go to the opening but she went and they invited her up on the stage and she took a bow oh. and like she, you know, she, she loved that part. Man, Cody, you're going to get free meals for the rest of your life. Like literally. And, but that's the thing. It's like, there's so many negative aspects to our culture and our mentality. I wouldn't say negative. I would just say minuses, right? Cause it's plus and minuses everywhere in every sort of mentality. But it's one of those things. It's like, even with my parents, they can really give me the shits 
<laughs> and I can go and see them and visit them. And then I come home and I'm like, Ugh. but then my mom will literally be like, oh, see now, I made you a soup. I made you a favorite goulash, you know? And it's just like, yeah, you know, we're lucky in that sense, I guess, where they redeem themselves, you know, <laughs> with their cooking. And that's what you said. Yeah, it's definitely love comes through the stomach. Yes, correct. Friends Croatia, she was like, I met her here on the Gold Coast, funnily enough. And um, she really didn't like the culture. And it's funny, she spent more time overseas than what I did. And she's vegetarian. And I remember like one specific moment where <laughs> she'd come to visit my parents and I hadn't seen her in many years because she went back to Croatia and never seen her for a long time. Facebook came about everything. So thankfully we reconnected. And my mom is giving her a container full of sarma. And she's like, ah, oh, like, Franca, Franca, Evo, ponesi mami, ti, whatever. Like, you guys can eat it later. She's like, oh, this is vintana, like, ya ne de meso. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, like, just don't say that. Like, don't. Just take the food. Like, she's so honest and pure and beautiful. And I was fucking petrified, like, my mom's about to throw this container, right? It's going to be a scene. And my dad looks at her, like, you know those birds when they turn their heads? Like, <laughs> they're curious. And it's like, pa, it's sarma. And she's like, <laughs> and she just looks at me. I look at them. They're looking at me. Everyone's confused by what's happening. And then my mom's like, "Pai, now there's it. You can just eat the cabbage. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> All was well in the world again. And she just grabs a container. I'm sweating. I'm like, oh, they're never going to allow my friend to come back inside the house after this. You know, later on we had a laugh. And she's like, oh, but I really just didn't want to take. And I'm like, just take the fucking container. You always take the container. You never say no. So for you, it's sort of like how do you, how do you see Croatia now? Because obviously it's changed a lot. And I watched the recent cooking show. What was it? Was it like that ready, steady cook? Oh, what was the name? My best friend's sister was on it, and she's from Australia. Her mother's Croatian. And everybody that had cooked meals didn't cook with meso. Like everybody was like on these like special like vegetarian vegan whatever so i'm like whoa like even croatia's changing obviously with all the amount of foreigners that are coming in so how do you see that sort of like those differences now obviously since you had come in 20 years ago well it's uh it is funny sometimes i miss what i kind of call like crappy croatia right like when when we first got here like if you wanted to go out to eat it was you could only go to like fancy like traditional restaurant chivapi or pizza or fancy chivapi and pizza mm. right and, and like that was it and um you know now there's all kinds of stuff uh which is good i mean it's better but at the same time like you know i we went to london over the summer and it was kind of frustrating because it just you know it, it had become like everywhere else i'd been there before in 95 you know, and like we went to Camden Town, which was used to be this cool place. And now there's like a Starbucks and a Wendy. And it's just like America, you know, it's just mm. more America. Like, wow. Ah. And, you know, I kind of feel like that's a little bit with Croatia, you know, um, so that that the u uniqueness of things that used to be there is kind of fading away a little bit. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's still, you know, it's still the people. Um, you know that that stuff is still around it's not that different it's just you know it's just changes but you know that's the nature of the game you know um i do think the changes in croatia are happening very quickly after you know and and, and croatians are socially uh, i'll say conservative i don't mean politically i just mean like you know I, in my opinion, most Croatians would like tomorrow to be exactly as close to how today was, regardless of how crappy today was, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, like, like they'd rather like consistency rather than progress in some ways. Um, and so I, you know, I, I think the changes are, are coming uh, very quickly. Uh, you know, the tourism has, and it, it's mostly, I would say through the tourism, um, you know, I mean, the coast is just a different animal than it was 10 years ago. Mm. Um, you know, split is all, you know, what used to be cafes on the Riva are now all bistros, mm. you know, stuff like that. And, um, you know, like. But also like the nomad this... visas as well. And, you know, like changing the terms yeah. around like who can come and visit and how people can work as well. 
Yeah, you know, and I mean, mm. Croatia needs workers, you know, it's, but, you know, I, it's just, um, you know, it's just change. And that's, that's, mm. that's how it's going to be, especially at this state of the world. Um, you know, so yeah, sometimes I miss crappy Croatia, you know, like, like, yeah, you know, kind of like same thing, like, like all the Pekaras now are chains, you know, they're mm. Croatian chains, but they're Lenar, Dubrava, Pek, Pan Pek. I miss like the, you know, the authentic Albanian ones, you know, mm. like that, that this one and this, the, the, these two Pekaros that were near each other had different stuff, mm. you know. Um, you know yeah, kind of... it's the magic, but I feel like that's what makes a place have that like untouched magic, if you could say. And then once you start to commercialize it to a degree. Yeah. And yeah. for me, it's sort of like, okay, they're letting in all these people to come in and be on nomad visas and, you know, work work from home and on their laptops. And that's all wonderful and great. And it does wonders for the country. But it's just like, yeah, what are they doing for the young crowd there? Like, what are they doing for the actual people who were born and bred there, you know, who have moved out to other places? So it just sort of feels like this weird cycle in a way because, yeah, so many of my cousins, like almost all of them, none of them live in Croatia or Bosnia anymore. Yeah. Yeah, which, you know, you know and to me, the, the the tragedy of that is just because I feel like we're supplement, we're, we're replacing, okay, now I'm a, you know, but I, I reject <laughs> expat now. I'm an immigrant, right? I'm not, yeah. I, I'm here. I live in exile from Oklahoma. I'm not going back, right? Mm -hmm. I like my public health care. I like, free university mm -hmm. i like safety you know um i like neighbors that say hello and good evening and if you don't say hello the old ladies are like like what the, you know i like the old ladies feel like they can tell you what to do to me yeah. these, these yeah. are the things right and um but i feel like you know it's we're replace we're bringing in people who don't have an attachment to the place you know mm -hmm. and and replacing them with the people who who do have an attachment and and that's the you know that's the thing is you yeah, I you know I mean I'm gonna end up being a bigger Croatian patriot than my entire family because I'm an immigrant yeah you know? but uh you know I I just I worry I make a joke in my stand-up routine you know that 400,000 people have left the country in the last 10 years and there's still nowhere to park um because <laughs> yeah. you know but that, that that but that we're gonna run out of croatians you know you got people i know but i did my part i made a croatian right mm. i made one everybody needs to make one um i don't know i mean it's just <laughs> it's 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 definitely yeah an interesting place that's for sure and often we because my husband and i've been talking about going back as in me, me you know me and my family sort of migrating back and then how that would look and sort of sell everything up here and because part of my postpartum days where I was just delirious I was watching House Hunters International and I was like damn I love that just sell everything and leave <laughs> and I'm like oh my god I don't want to leave my parents like I don't want to leave my grandparents are buried here now my sister see with her kids my brothers like do you know what I mean? I've, I've, I've put down roots here too and it's like just how that looks starting again in a new place with my child, I would love the experience partially for Vito because I feel like that shapes you, makes you a different adult when you've had that experience of living somewhere else. But then it's like, wouldn't it be so easy just to go make a life and go, oh, you know what? I don't fucking like it. Let's go back to Australia now. And it's, you can't just uproot the family so easily. So it's definitely something we're juggling and experiencing and talking about. And so I, you know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I will time. say, you know, one of the advantages of being an American and having an American daughter in croatia is that america is everywhere right mm. she's she's uh, like she was with her cousins in london you know who are american and they don't miss a beat i mean they're they're completely fine you know she's a little bit exotic to them uh <laughs> but it's it's mostly because she's a nerd um but uh you know it, whereas like if you're croatian you know this is why like the diaspora community and stuff that you guys that, mm. you know you hold on to these traditions and things because you it's not everywhere. You have yes. to preserve it. Oh, you know? man. So if you saw, like, the minuscule of shops that we have, there, okay, the fucking funniest thing you would laugh your head off, there is a Chinese guy who owns a European deli grocer that sells stuff from the Balkans. He's Chinese, okay? There was a Serbian man down the road from him who originally had a shop, smaller, less, less sort of items, less collect, you know, 
But people weren't going to see the Serbian guy. They hijacked him and went, nah, nah, screw you, buddy. This guy's got better prices. And then my mom rings me and says, Ivana, yes, to be like called Kineza. And I'm like, koji kinez, what are you on about? They should grow some mum. Or what I buy there? She's like, ma ne, naša prodavnica. Like, it's our shop, but a Chinese guy sells it. I'm like, what's a Chinese guy selling kiki lollies to me for? Like, so she says to me, make sure you go the week they open because he's giving everybody a bag of flour, like a free 10 kilo bag. And that's a lot, man, for like a European woman who makes pita all the time and braids or whatever. I'm like, mom, look, I don't really care. I can buy all purpose, you know, flour like any time of the week. Like, I don't need 10 kilos of flour. She's like, go, go, go. He can give it to you, then he can give it to me. Right? And I was like, okay, all right, deal. So I go in there and this guy's like, hello, like, yeah, <laughs> like he's waving to me. I'm like, this is so weird. So <laughs> get what I need, get my 10, K, 10 kgs of flour. And I was like, start interrogating him as you do. It's part of my DNA. I start interrogating him. The guy probably thinks I'm a police officer. And he's looking at me and I'm like, how did you come to open a shop like this? And he's like, oh, I have my Sedonian friend. He tell me very good business. And I'm like, what a fucking genius, you know, and this is why they're killing it and we're not, you know, <laughs> but that's the whole mentality. It's like, don't go to one of our own, screw him. We don't want to give him our money, but we want to give the Chinese guy our money because he gives us like free lollies upon exit. Like we just fall for the dumbest shit, you know what I mean? And I was just like, anyway, so now that's the only shop that exists because he killed off the other dude's business. And now that's the only shop we have, Cody, in the whole of like where we live. You know, it is, it's a pretty decent sized city and that's the only store we have where we can buy our produce. So every single time I go, I'm spending 150 to $200 minimum, minimum. Macedonian friend was right. <laughs> oh, Macedonian buddy was onto it. I come home with this big box and Andrew's like, so did you buy actual food? Like, is there actual food like, you know, that we're going to cook with? And I'm like, no. And he's like, why do you have 20 cans of pasteta? Like, I'm like, because, you know, in case COVID happens again, so I'm, like, stacking my little argeta, like, in the cup, and he's like, you're a freak. And I've got chocolates and lollies and smoky, and he's just shaking his head, and he sees the receipt. He's like, 250 bucks. I'm like, yeah, nostalgia costs money. Like, this bloke tapped into a market, and every time in there, it's pumping, it's busy as. So that's the thing. Like, we do hang on to it because it's not everywhere. Right. You know, it's right. not everywhere. Like the culture, the customs, the this, the that. Like it's sort of, it's it's sometimes you feel like it's a lot because you're like, even with Vito, it's he's growing. I'm like, what's he going to know about where we're from, you know? So I feel like I have to try that much harder because I'm not there, if that makes sense. Yeah, how's, no, it totally makes sense. How's it been for you? Like, I don't. Because, your daughter? You, know, you don't. I know. It's so natural. American, you're just like, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I was like, she better watch Star Wars when she's two. <laughs> But, um, you know, other than that, you know, it's just it's just in the, the you know, that's the that's the privilege of being an American, you know, mm. is that we yes. just have, this, you know, we're everywhere. Yeah. You know? Whether yeah. you like it or not. And that's the thing. It's like now I'm like against it. I'm like, uh, you know, at least I, like I'm I'm happy now that Croatia still doesn't have a Starbucks. Like mm -hmm. that makes me, you know, so. Yeah. And how do you find parenting her like from those two different cultural perspectives obviously oh. like yes those things are those nuances you know like having those things there but like from well, the mentality that, perspective now that i accept the the feeling of propu not the science but the mm -hmm. feeling she feels like i've betrayed her i think because because oh. now i'm like yeah you should put on a, a undershirt and she's like 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 you Dad. used to be on the side you know and I'm like, oh, it's like you used you to know. be cool and now you're turning yeah. into pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, but but the other difference too is I'm also like, you know, I still believe that she should experience her own failure. So I'm like, well, if she says she's not cold, let her go out and and learn that she is cold, right? And then my wife's like, she'll get, you know, <laughs> you know, but but my wife's kind of changed a little bit too. She's like, okay, like yeah, you know, like I'm not gonna, so you know, I and like then we're it. both disappointed when she's like, no, I wasn't cold. We're like what it's 22 <laughs> degrees how are you that cold you know oh, Anything, here, anything but here it's sunny all the time like all yeah. the time and my sister she's worse than me 
and she, she'll testify to this. And her little daughter, Bella, was born and she was like two or three years old. And we took her out for ice cream, you know, me, my little brother and my mum, because my sister was working. So we were looking after her that day. My sister says, oh, you know, okay, take her, please watch her, please this, please, you know. She was like very, you know, regimental with her. And I was like, fair enough, she's your kid. And, and I agreed, I'm her auntie. And it's fucking hot, stinking hot. That's why we're going to have ice cream. And my sister messages us, does she have a jacket on? It, does she have a cardigan? Like this thing with cardigans became a running joke in the family. And my little brother screenshots the temperature. It was like 34 that day, humidity 85%. Screenshots it, sends it to my sister, says nothing. She she writes, lol, okay, point taken. <laughs> and like she's my little brother just did it with that one screenshot, whereas I was going to explain how we had put the cardigan on. She was hot. She resisted. She she threw it on the floor. She said, I'm not hot. And it's just funny how it's this like universal legend and it's everywhere. But my fave, like there's some favorite parts I have from your book that I'm like, I want to freaking read it out. It's on page 97. It's in relation to you and your daughter. And you said, uh, America, um, American, as someone American who doesn't regularly wear socks or slippers indoors. Uh, it says a few weeks later, we were at the park with other neighborhood kids. It was a warm day in May and Sarah was playing in a sandbox. I sat with other children's grandmothers on a nearby bench. Sarah ran up to me and asked if she could take her shoes off and play in the sandbox. I said, sure. She promptly removed her sneakers and socks and shoved her socks back inside her shoes. She wiggled her toes in delight, letting the sand sift through them. Everything was fine until the other kids got wind of what she was doing. Then, like a group of, what did you say, peasants, they asked their grandmothers if they could take their shoes off too. Of course, the answer was no. I was confronted with angry stares from now dis disgruntled grandmothers. They began speaking Croatian really, really fast, a clue they were talking about me. The kids protested, asking Sarah, uh, you know, they can be, why can she be barefoot and they can't? I raised my hand, begin to offer some bit of an excuse when Sarah turned to all of them and said, it's okay, I'm an American. <laughs> I just like read, like I was reading this and it was like visuals just firing off in my head. And I was just like, holy shit, this is me at the park. Like this is, I am the Bubba and my husband is you. And Vito's like taking off his shoes, his socks, and he's like barefoot. I'm like, you're going to cut yourself. There's going to be a syringe somewhere that someone's left in the park. And they just have no fear of cutting their feet or getting them dirty. And Andrew just doesn't have this thing in his head that, like, that could be dangerous. And just this, like, one whole paragraph just summed up all my parenting. <laughs> and as we just sat there and he's like, why you got tears running down your face? Like, what are you even reading? And then I just, like, read the light. Like the, and he's just like, oh, my God, is he fucking talking about you? Like, you're the bubba? <laughs> And I just had this realization, like, I'm the Bubba and he's you, he's the American. But the best part was Sarah saying, it's okay, I'm an American. Like, it's all right, guys. It's all good. I've got you covered. Like, it's honestly yeah. like the bet that I've pointed out so many, I uh, like bookmarked so many pages. And I was like, this is going to take hours to get through. But on page 99, because you, 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 you know, you sum it up really well, all of it, and the cultural nuances, but the biggest thing was Propul, like Promaya, the murderous wind. And it literally says, you know, about Promaya, <laughs> this is my favourite part, it says, immediately dry your hair after a shower, never go outside or go to sleep with wet hair. And my dad says that there was a woman in the village who went to bed with wet hair, she woke up, she had a crooked face the next day. Yeah, she, she had palsy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I was like, Dad, that is so far-fetched. Because even my bubba, don't walk backwards. Don't open up don't open up an umbrella inside the house. Don't, yeah, wet hair. Like, the list goes on. And you're just like, what the hell? You guys are sick. Like, you guys are not even normal. Like, it's such a, it's such a worrisome state to live in, you know? But how do you find now, 20 years, sort of 18 years in for you, how do you find you've enmeshed? everything in a couple. Oh, my God. Like, how well, so I did this. The last time we were in the States, we went for Christmas in 2019, so before the pandemic. And uh, I was at my sister's house, and my niece had taken a shower and was combing her hair, her wet hair, in the living room, right? And and I told her, I said, you should dry your hair. And she said, why? And I said, because it's cold outside. And then she looked at me and was like, yeah, it's cold outside and i was like oh my god i did the thing like i took the outside temperature and i 
and I equated it to somehow like affecting us inside. You know, um, I told a kid that I didn't know that he should put on a jacket. So it's yeah. just, and again, like I said, you know, uh, like my brain rejects all of this, but my soul is like, mm, you better, you know, so I've, I've changed, you know, yeah. um, except in the summer in the summer, I still need a breeze and stuff, yes. but you know, I wear, I, I mean, even now I have a, I have an undershirt on, Damn. you know, I went, I went out last spring in just a, in just a button shirt. And then, you know, tried to read on a bench, but I felt like, you know, some air <laughs> you around my key. You felt like something was missing. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, I have to wear these shirts now. Like I have to wear, I have to wear undershirts. Like, it's, just, it's just like yeah. a child who gets dressed by their mother with the pot cushion with the undershirt. And then, you know, and that's how my mom used to dress us. Like, especially in the winter, it was like layers upon layers upon layers because we'd go sledding or whatever. And now it's so hot here. It just, it's impossible. Like, I try my hardest. Like, I wear socks all the time. And the slippers, like, my cousin's partner, she's Australian, and she said to me, I don't understand the slipper regime. I don't understand that you have outdoor slippers and you walk in and you have another set of slippers. He's like, She's like, I just don't get the slipper game. And I'm like, dude, just flow with it. It's just easier if the Tetka tells you to put on the slippers, you just fucking do it. You don't protest. You don't fight. You don't kick and scream. No, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> don't, you don't voice your opinion. You just accept it. Right? You don't say you're vegetarian. You just take the food and then you throw it away. Yes, yes. Just eat the cabbage. Just, yeah. yeah oi. You know? But it's uh, interesting, isn't it? Like the whole duality of the two worlds colliding together what do you think? I'm not going to ask you which one's better because you can't just sort of break it even like that. You can't because there's so many nuances. But if for me, I often feel like there is so much emphasis here in Australia on the self, like the self-improvement and the self, you know, self-motivation and the self, 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 self. Whereas I feel like from our culture, it's more on the community. It's more on the entirety of everybody. It's not just about you and your actions. It's like, well, how is it affecting everybody? Like this bigger thing than you. So how are you sort of with your parenting, how are you sort of learning to navigate that of like, you know, because your daughter, you want her to have a voice and an opinion and say, Nisan glad, no, I don't want that. Like to have those healthy boundaries and not, you know, have these things pushed upon her. How do you navigate that now? Well, we did, for that one, we just do it, you know, I'm still – protestant and you know believe in some type of form of self-reliance and my wife doesn't so it's just split down the middle you know when she's with me i'm like yeah there's food in the fridge go get it right when you know um so that part's fine um in terms of like which is but i mean i i think you know one of the to me this is going to sound a little bit political but for me one of the biggest tragedies of american life is how we convinced everybody that the community doesn't matter you know and that society is some kind of myth and we're all just a bunch of individual uh profit seekers you know that's that to me that's just that's just not human right we live in a society we you, no one's alone you know so yeah work on yourself but also work on your community work on your neighbors you know um mm -hmm. i love the fact that I say hi to my neighbors every day, you know, and that we see each other and we talk about stuff. And, um, you know, that community that in my neighborhood here, you know, I, everybody knows each other. Like, I don't know their names necessarily, but we know their faces. You know, when I got a dog, everyone was like, when did you get a dog? I'm like, since when do you know who the hell I am? Right. You know, yeah. and, and, and so I just, you know, to me, again, uh, these Western cultures, America, America, it's so easy to be alone and feel isolated. And here, I just don't ever really feel that way because I know that there's a community out there. I know that there's a society out there and I'm a part of it. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and that everybody else knows that they're a part of it. And, you know, you just move in this, it's like with Veze, right? You move mm -hmm. in this orbit of Veze and it's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, um, it can be, you can abuse it, right? You can mm -hmm. use it for Uchlebs, being at Uchleb and nepotism and stuff. But on the other hand, it just means you are somehow obligated to each other. Yeah. And yes. whereas in the States, we have this myth that we're not, you know, and that's why we're falling apart because we also don't want the state to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're also pretending that as individuals, we don't have to do it. 
you know, and that's bananas. Oh, it's a huge, it's a huge, huge topic. Like, honestly, you could probably just do a whole podcast episode just on that one little nuance. And that's exactly the thing. Like, I live right, like, Croatian people that own um, a bunch of aged care, you know, facilities. And one of them is just down the road here. And, you know, and I just see that. And I see these old people and they're walking by themselves. And, you know, there's such a big aged care community. There's such a big child care community here. Like, it's so normal to be four months postpartum get your little baby, give it to a stranger, pay them hundreds of dollars per week, you know, and then go back to your shitty fucking job that pays you like 30 bucks an hour, you know, yeah, and pretend perfect. like that's fine. So right. when I, like I went to Vito's school recently, he starts prep. So it's the year before year one. And I went there last week and it was the most interesting thing where I've got the, she said, oh, you've got to sign in love. And I'm like, oh, the fucking signing in. Because, you know, in case someone trips and falls and there's an insurance thing and it's like, oh, can't we all just hang? Can't I just walk in and we all hang? Like, where do you think I'm coming from? Just bring my kid randomly to the school. Like, you know, I was happy to chill at home, have my coffee, not go there. He says, mommy, take me. I want to. It's going to be fun. I'm like, all right, do the right thing. We get there. I'm signing in, you know, signing away. And then it says on there, what's the childcare? Where where does he go to childcare? And there's this whole form is packed like it's full and then it says everyone's got the names of the childcare and on there I just wrote an A like not applicable and that is just such a controversy for people I'm the only person amongst 20 signatures or 25 that like my child hasn't been to childcare in five years and people turn around and say to me oh so where, who who is he with and I'm like with me and like family and to them, that is so puzzling how I could want to spend so much time with my kid and like take a pay cut and like not progress financially. And like, yeah, we don't go on fancy holidays. We don't do fancy shit, but I don't care because yeah. I'm happy at home, like cooking chavapi on the barbecue, hanging with my family. Like, do you know what I mean? The values are so different. And it's really interesting existing in that society with those values, you know, because here the value is capitalism. Yeah. You know, and, and, it's how and can we me- franchise everything? It's a it, to me. It's all it's a, it's a scam. Like we're we're it's a lie that says, oh well, you're gonna be happy when you work your butt off and don't see your family. And mm-hmm. you know, it, you know, it's like now and now there's a whole this thing like uh, we don't have uh you know we're running out of people, right? And it's like, oh well, everybody needs to make babies so we can have workers. I'm like, what this this is insane. Like you're telling me I need to start a family not because you know of love and affection and mm-hmm. this human need to procreate and you know, but so that we can have workers for capitalism. Like, no, let's yeah. maybe rethink oh, 100%, this. You know? 100%. We had a baby bonus where mums were being paid, I don't know, $2,000. So, so there was a big baby boom where each woman was being paid $2,000 to have a kid. But then what you end up having is everybody reliance on social security. Like yeah. all those people end up being on our version of social, which is Centrelink. And all those people end up just being doll bludgers that they call here, which is like Centrelink bludgers, you know, people who don't work, who just live off the system. So it's just interesting. Yeah, the, there's so many pluses and minuses. And, you know, and I spoke to my best friend's mom and she said, I don't know if I could ever go back to the Croatian mentality after she's spent so many years here because things don't run as they should, you know, quote unquote. So she's like, in a way, she feels like she has to learn how to walk again. And in yeah. her later years, but her Croatian's perfect. She teaches Croatian like she grew up there, but she's just now used to this way of life so much. So, yeah, there's so many of us out there just floating around, like looking to connect. And, and that's the whole reason why I started the podcast and why you wrote the book, right, is so that these things live outside of us so that, yeah, you are sort of finding those connections and connecting those dots and, you know, and, and doing it for the greater good, not just doing it for ourselves. So, Oh, yeah, honestly, there is so much more I could talk to you about, but you've got to take your daughter to school. And I totally appreciate that you got up at fucking 6 a.m., probably even earlier, to make yourself a call. Yeah, no problem. At 6 a.m., I'm like, man, if he's totally... That's how how much I love to talk about Croatia. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, okay, I'll get up there. (laughs) You should be ambassador of Croatia. I feel like your face just needs to be everywhere, like in a little plaque, like just coding, (laughs) carved out in a statue. Like, because, yeah, you know, you have done a lot for that community, and I think it's awesome. And sort of can you like they've done a lot for me i mean that's you know it's a two-way street so you know um i mean look the biggest the biggest thing is is being in a foreign country with different people and feeling like it's home Mm -hmm. that and and not because i make it home but because the people around me are like yeah okay you can be here you know that's that's great yeah definitely and and we do that really well like i think even the neighbors, everybody that meets or beats on the street, like he collects people for me. He will go and make a friend and say, Mama, 
can you get their number? Did you get the mum's Facebook mum? And I'm like, because I have to lie to him and say, yeah, yeah, I added her on Facebook, you know. And he, he says to them at the playground, you come to our house for a coffee? He's like, you come have a coffee, you come for barbecue. Mama, can they come for barbecue? And I've just met this fucking person that I don't <laughs> like that's like shonky for a whole 10 minutes and he's inviting them for a barbecue. And then I just pause in that moment and go, I'm doing well. Like, because that's like, it's that transfer of those feeling and those emotions and that, that I'm trying to feel, if that makes sense. Yeah. I'm like, and sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. think, am I doing it? And then your kids models it to you and you're just like, I thought I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Yeah. So I think you're doing extremely well and let people know where they can find you. Like how can people connect with you? How can they? Uh, so you? I'm on Instagram. Uh, I was on Twitter until it got crappy. Um, mm. Facebook, uh, there's a Facebook page that I sometimes update called the blog rep, which was the page I created for my blog. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't do that that often. Uh, but Instagram, I guess, is the best way, right? LinkedIn, if they're professionals, um, you know, Cody McLean Brown, Croatia, stuff will come up. Oh, that's awesome. There, I'm, I think I'm the only can, one. <laughs> hopefully we can get you out to Australia, man. I'll be like your little tour guide manager person. That'd be great. We'll just That'd like pimp great. you out everywhere. Like we can go to Sydney, go here, go there. You can just, because there's such a big community in Australia, like of, you know, from the diaspora from all over and like we just feast on anybody who comes and like we just went to sort of an ayabuka concert and i was literally like looking at the crowd and everybody's just singing and and it was just like in this dungeon this like little underground like place and they're rocking their little hearts out you know and this bloke's like 70 like just performing and i'm just like holy shit like you'd never even know these people existed you know what i mean like there's just so many ties to the to the motherland it's beautiful to see so you never know what will come from this you know so yeah it's just spread your message everywhere and i want everyone to buy this book honestly there is so many reference points i have here that i can't read out because it'll take too much time but you've got chasing a croatian girl and what was your other book i should have done my research uh, croatia strikes back nice love it any more books in the pipeline um no i mean nothing about croatia i got some other stuff i'm working on but we are i'm working with the uh, robert knyaz i don't know if you guys know who that is uh on making uh the book into a tv show um That's awesome. and so it'll be kind of like seinfeld and modern family curb your enthusiasm I, the plan is for me to play me um so we'll see we're filming hopefully filming the pilot in december or january Oh, so. that is bloody awesome. How are we going to be able to watch it in Australia? Like, is it going to be? Uh, you'll probably be able to watch it on, on if, if it depends on who picks it up. If, if Hot TV mm -hmm. picks it up, then you can watch it on their app. Most yeah. Likely, yeah. So. Oh, that would be bloody awesome. I would love that. No, thank you, Cody. I appreciate your time, like, and getting My up so early. My pleasure. I'll and, do it again. And do, oh, yeah, dude, you'll come back. I got, like, I just, every time someone says something to me, I've just got, like, little cylinders firing off, you know, so... It was a pleasure to talk to you today. And um, yeah, for anybody who wants to connect with you, just jump on all the socials and send Cody a message and, and go from there. So thanks for coming on. Thanks. Voila. Ciao. So that was the episode. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And as ever, if you did, please consider sharing it with your loved ones and leaving me a review on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. It really does make a difference to the number of Balkan sisters that we can reach with the brilliant wisdom that my guests and I share. Thanks for being here. Idovijenia.